I'm singing! I'm in a store and I'm singing! Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 unscripted Christmas movie moments that were left in. Uh oh. Where have you gone, Joe DiMaggio? I bet you didn't know. That was all written for the movie. It was a score, technically. I didn't know that one. Can't go anywhere. For this list, we'll be looking at moments from our favorite festive flicks that might not have been in the original script, but someone behind the scenes decided to include it in the final cut as a holiday gift to moviegoers. Which unplanned Christmas movie moment can you not imagine your favorite film without? Share some unscripted holiday spirit in the comments. Number 10. The Great Muppet Improvisers – The Muppet Christmas Carol Charles Dickens' Christmas novel has been adapted plenty of times. A blue furry Charles Dickens who hangs out with a rat? Absolutely! Charles Dickens was a 19th century novelist, a genius. Oh, you were too kind. However, arguably, no holiday period is complete without at least one viewing of the Muppets version. According to Steve Whitmire, who voiced Kermit, among others, at the end of a scene, the Muppets would stick around and chat about how they thought the shoot went. The entire day? No, no, no that's the frog's no, idea. No, no. If you please, Mr. Scrooge, why open the office tomorrow? Other businesses will be closed. You'll have no one to do business with. Sometimes it was general chit-chat about the quality of their work, and other times, well, the movie would have needed a whole new rating. Apparently, some of that content inspired moments that ended up making the final cut. Let's play yes and no. Oh, wonderful game! Oh, oh yes! Yeah. Oh, that's a great game! Yeah, I'll be it. Yes, let Fred be it. He always thinks of good things. Although we can't be sure, we'd love to believe that this tender moment between Rizzo the Rat and Gonzo was improvised and kept in. Number 9. Susan's Reaction to Santa's Beard – Miracle on 34th Street in this Christmas classic, Kris Kringle has to prove that he's not just the man who cried Santa after meeting Susan Walker and her mom. Well, I thought as long as we're in the store, you might as well say hello to Santa Claus. Why? Well, because when you talk to him, you might feel differently about him. We imagine this seemed like a fairly easy task for young actress Natalie Wood, who was convinced that her co-star Edmund Gwen was the real deal. In the film, Susan isn't sure if Santa's real or not and pulls on his beard to check. Your beard doesn't have one of those things that goes over your ears. Well, that's because it's real, just like I'm really a Santa Claus. Oh, go ahead, pull it. Well, while that part was scripted, Gwen apparently improvised his response to prompt an authentic reaction from the young actress. Anything to keep the magic alive, eh? Unfortunately, when Gwen turned up to the rap party beardless, the illusion was shattered. I didn't get it. I knew it wouldn't be here, but I thought there'd be a letter or something telling me. I don't suppose you even want to talk to me. Number 8. Uncle Billy, is that you? It's a Wonderful Life. Thanks to its heartwarming narrative, stellar cast, and humorous moments, is it any wonder this film became a timeless classic? Merry Christmas, movie house! Merry Christmas, Emporium! Merry Christmas, you wonderful old Billy and Lone! In one moment that always gets the loudest laughs, we watch Uncle Billy drunkenly stumble out of shot. There's a crash, and he yells out that he's all right. Well, what if we told you that wasn't Uncle Billy at all? A crew member dropped some equipment, and that's actually his voice you're hearing. My wild the timing was so perfect that writer, director, and producer Frank Capra decided to use it in the movie. Also, you know Miss Davis's shy smile after George kisses her at the bank? Supposedly, that's a genuine reaction to an unscripted smooch. All right, Miss Davis. Well, could I have seventeen fifty? Bless your heart, of course you can have it. You got fifty cents. <laughs> Calling pop culture superfans everywhere. Do you love to argue with WatchMojo's top ten ranks? Introducing WatchMojo's first and very own party game. Bring your superpowers to the table and fight for your pick to be at the top of the list. It's all the fun of the comment section, but in real life. Number 7. The Dinner Scene – A Christmas Story Set in the 1940s and told through a series of vignettes, this dysfunctional family Christmas is one that many can relate to. <laughs> a bona fide golly turkey freak. 
A few days before Christmas, his eyes would begin to gleam with a wild and ravenous light. But in one of its best and wildest scenes, the family head to a Chinese restaurant after losing the turkey to a pack of hungry dogs. At the restaurant, they're serenaded by the staff and presented with a whole roasted duck. Melinda Dillon, who played Mrs. Parker, lets out a yelp when she sees the bird before dissolving back into fits of giggles. Apparently, this is because she was given a different version of the script to incite genuine surprise and a real reaction. This behind-the-scenes tidbit is the icing on the Christmas cookie. That Christmas would live in our memories. Number 6. Sisters – White Christmas while the title song remains unrivaled, Sisters, performed by Betty and Judy Haynes, is pretty iconic, too. I'm here to keep my eye on her, caring, sharing, every little thing that we are wearing. Apparently, Bing Crosby and Danny Kaye also thought so when they decided to take a crack at it while killing time between takes. There were never such devoted sisters. Never had to have a chaperone, no sir. I'm here to keep my eye on her. As the story goes, the actors put on bits of costume belonging to their on-screen love interests and started messing about while lip-syncing to the track. The director, Michael Curtiz, thought it was hilarious and worked it into the story. Lord, help the mister who comes between me and my sister. Crosby also proved to be quite the proficient ad-libber in other scenes, too. For instance, he improvised much of the dialogue during his kitchen rendezvous with Betty, leading into the song Count Your Blessings. We are loaded here. We got New England Blue Plate or the uh, Vermont Smorgasbord. Now this glass is too short, probably, but I think you find the prices right. What do we have? Number 5. Emma Thompson's Tearful Moment – Love Actually in one of Love Actually's most heartbreaking scenes, we see Emma Thompson's Karen crying in her bedroom after uncovering her husband's unfaithfulness. According to the director, Richard Curtis, Thompson was instructed to, quote, let the emotion show, and she took it from there. And you leave them laughing when you go. The scene was shot 12 times, with Thompson's raw emotion pouring out with every take. No doubt, she was drawing on her real-life experiences. Somehow it's love's illusions that I recall I really don't know love Also, did you know that the airport footage was captured by cameras hidden around Heathrow's Terminal 3? When crew members caught a special moment, they approached individuals asking them to sign a waiver so they could potentially include it in the film. They were all messages of love. If you look for it, I've got a sneaky feeling you'll find that love actually is all around. We love actually how authentic those moments are. Number 4. Mr. Napkinhead – The Holiday Is it even Christmas time if you haven't yet watched this modern classic? You have to check this out sometime. The mission? The score is genius. It just comes from a totally different place. It's like, I can't even... Just promise me you'll rent it and listen to it. Printing. Thank you. It gave us countless iconic moments, some of which weren't in the original script. According to director Nancy Myers, Jack Black's movie score breakdown in the video store was ad libbed. It's not elaborate. I can go loud. Mmm. But, um, two notes. And you've got a villain. I don't know what to say about it. Totally brill. Also, Dustin Hoffman's cameo was a last-minute addition since he just happened to be nearby that day. Miffy Englefield, who played Graham's daughter Sophie, also shared that the Mr. Napkinhead scene was mostly ad-libbed. Yeah, you pass me those glasses when I need them. Amanda, you're gonna love this. You're gonna help me put them on. It's so funny. I mean, you're, you're full of your chair, it's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> Myers wanted the interaction to be organic and told the girls to behave as they would naturally. It's so brilliant, we could fall off our chairs, it's so brilliant. <laughs> Smoking's really bad for you. Yay! <laughs> Number 3. Kevin's Iconic Scream – Home Alone 
When we say home alone, what's the first thing you do? If it's clasp your face and scream, this one's for you. I took a shower washing every body part with actual soap, including all my major crevices, including in between my toes and in my belly button, which I never did before but sort of enjoy. In this scene, Kevin reacts dramatically to the sting of cologne and aftershave on his face. According to the director, Chris Columbus, Macaulay Culkin was instructed to move his hands away from his face and scream. However, during their first take, the young actor left his hands on his cheeks, which the crew found absolutely hysterical. Other than that, I'm in good shape. They did a couple more takes where Culkin followed the stage directions, but they already knew the first one was the winner. And they weren't wrong. As far as iconic Christmas film moments go, this one ranks pretty high. It's so funny. So funny. What are you laughing at? You did it again, didn't you? Number two, The Grinch's Magic Trick How the Grinch Stole Christmas. The Grinch spends a lot of time either chatting to himself or his dog Max, offering Jim Carrey a plethora of opportunities to riff on the spot. In one such hilarious instance, he examines his busy schedule for reasons to reject an invitation from Whoville including this ad-libbed appointment. 6.30, dinner with me. I can't cancel that again. After a change of heart, he ponders what to wear and grabs a tablecloth. Of course, if I bump the loathing to nine, I could still be done in time to lay in bed, stare at the ceiling, and slip slowly into madness. But what would I wear? Believe it or not, that perfectly executed trick wasn't what was meant to happen. So, in true Grinch spirit, Carrie returns and knocks everything down himself. Later, while prepping Max for their big heist, he channels director Ron Howard, even wearing one of his signature baseball caps. Howard thought it was hilarious and kept it in. Then one day, Santa picks you and you say Christmas. Now forget that part. We'll improvise. Just keep it kind of loosey goosey. Number one, much of the movie, Elf. It shouldn't come as much of a surprise that Will Ferrell was behind some of the funniest moments from this must-see Christmas flick. There's room for everyone on the nice list. Number three. The best way to spread Christmas cheer is singing loud for all to hear. With the comedian extraordinaire under the spotlight, director Jon Favreau encouraged Ferrell to play around with the dialogue while he just let the cameras roll. Some notable examples include the Jack in the Box reaction scene, Buddy's shenanigans around New York, and his improvised song lyrics. I'm singing, I'm in a store, and I'm singing, I'm in a store, and I'm singing! Hey! You'll also be happy to know that Farrell is responsible for one of the movie's most quotable lines. Okay, people, tomorrow morning, 10 a.m., Santa's coming to town! Santa! Oh my god! Santa here? I know him! Farrell truly commits with the utmost ecstatic childlike glee. No wonder Favreau cited it as one of his favorite moments. And if you ask us, you'd have to be a cotton-headed ninny muggins to disagree. Why don't you just say it? I'm the worst toy maker in the world. I'm a cotton-headed ninny muggins. <gasps> Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.